Hi, my name is Polly Frenchu, and I work in the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department here at Dunwoody. Today we're going to cover a little bit about wire resistance and voltage drop and um, looking at a few of the, the things uh, having to do with conductor sizing. So the first thing we want to talk about is when we talk about our wire resistance, we have to look at the actual size of the wire. Now if we remember, resistance of a conductor is dependent upon four different things. Okay? One of those things is our um, temperature, ambient temperature of what's going on in the area that it's going to be put into. The next thing would be our material. Okay? Most common conductors are going to be aluminum or copper conductors. The next one that it kind of counts to is the length of the conductor. How long is it? And the last one is our circular mill area, or the area of the conductor. How big is it? All these four factors determine how much resistance I have in my conductor. So first thing we're going to look at is circular mill area. It's an uncommon phrase, circular mills. Not much like inches or meters that many of us are familiar with. But circular mills is actually a common measurement out in the electrical field. Okay, you may have heard of American wire gauge. American wire gauge is based upon circular mills. So how they determine the amount of mills is first of all, circular mills is equal to diameter squared. Diameter is actually a measurement of mills or mills squared. And a mill is actually a very common measurement of a round object. So what we would do is if, say, I have a quarter inch diameter you know, conductor, I would first need to change this quarter inch, okay, which is real common here in the US doing inches, and I would change it to a decimal. So I'd take 1 divided by 4, come up with 0.25. The next thing is, is I want to convert it to mills. Well, the one thing to remember is 1 mill is equal to one thousandth of an inch. Okay, so to convert from inches to mils, I just have to multiply it by one thousand. Taking 0.25 times one thousand, I am then able to come up with two hundred and fifty mils. By coming up with that unit measure of 250 mils, I now want to convert it to circular mils because I want to use it to figure out resistance of my conductor. So I would then take this value and square it. Unlike area normally, which is pi r squared, we actually do just take the diameter squared of in mils. So take 250 mils squared, I then come up with 62,500 circular mils. This describes the total area of that conductor in circular mill terms. If you start using your code book, which many of you will, you would actually open that up into Table 8, Chapter 9 in the code book and read, and every conductor would have a circular mill area assigned to it, depending on the American wire gauge size. So this is for a round conductor. Let's get rid of this for just a second, and let's assume we have, say, a square conductor. How would we do a square conductor? Well, first of all, we look at the fact that we have a round conductor. And this one we just did had a quarter inch diameter. Now, what if we take and use that same measurement, but now we have a square conductor? First thing we have to realize is that this fits into this box, but we have a whole lot of area that's left over. Right? All these corner edges. Okay, and when we're talking wire resistance, we want to actually look at the entire area of the conductor because the entire area is being used for current flow, determines the resistance and such. So if I actually shift into a square conductor, I'm going to have more circular mills than I am a round conductor. So let's look at this. We have a quarter inch by a quarter inch. Well, let's use our formula. First thing we want to do is we want to change from inches to mils. So I take that quarter inch, I change it to a decimal of 0.25, I times it by a thousand, and I'm able to come up with 250 mils. 
Well, if I look at this square, I have 250 mils here, and I have 250 mils here. So if I look at that, come up with the area of a square, take height times length. So 250 times 250 gives me 62,500. Mills times mills gives me mills squared. Now if I look at this, I have more area here than I have here, but I have the same number. The key thing to realize is that this is mills squared, not circular mills. Circular mills is a standard measurement. Okay? It is a standard measurement just like an inch is, just like a foot is. If you think about it, came up with an inch probably watching an inchworm. Okay? Somebody looked at their foot and said, oh, that's a foot, that's a length. Okay, that's a standard measurement. Circular mills is a standard measurement. So to convert from this value here, which is the same as that, even though we have more area, we have to take and consider the conversion of a circle to a square. A circle, a square is 1.273 times larger than a circle. So when I'm dealing with a square conductor, I have to take that mill squared I have to convert it by multiplying it by 1.273. And then I am able to convert into my circular mill area. So therefore, my circular mills then of this particular conductor is 79,562 circular mills. I am now again in a standard measurement. But if you look, there's a much larger area than this is. So we take it into account. That's the first step of when we're looking at resistance. Is our circular mill area or square mills, depending on the type of conductor we have. So let's look at the other two, or other three. So as we convert into, we look at, we have temperature, material, length, and circular mill area. So we explained how to get circular mill area. Length is pretty self-explanatory. We know the longer, perhaps, it is probably the more resistance it would have. Kind of like if I add on segments to my hose, it's going to collect more dirt, therefore water's not going to flow quite so easily. And then these other two, temperature and material. Well, first of all, we look at our actual atomic number, and we also look at something else, something called resistivity. Resistivity of a conductor means how much resistance it has, or how much it resists resistance. How easily is it going to allow that current to flow? If I look at some common uh, conductors out there, you know, if you sit and go to the electronics store, you're going to buy gold, right? You're going to buy gold terminals because they're supposedly the best. In all actuality, the best conductor is silver. Next comes copper, then comes gold. So when you go to that store next time, think twice about buying those gold terminals. So as we look, that takes care of material. What's it made out of? Is it silver? Is it gold? Is it copper? Is it aluminum? And temperature. Obviously, when we increase temperature, resistance increases. So if we're using it in a warmer area or a warmer part of the country, we're going to use probably a larger size wire to account for the amount of heat that will be used in. If we put our wire in a boiler room, it's going to be a whole lot different than putting that wire in a classroom. So that does have a determinant on how much resistance we get. There is a formula for the resistance of a conductor. That formula states that R is equal to KL over CM. All right, so we have our formula. R is equal to KL over CM. If I look, we obviously see our CM, our circular mill area of the wire. L obviously stands for length. Okay, K is kind of a tough one. Never talked about K before. K is this value right here. K stands for the resistivity of the conductor. And that K value is based upon the type of material it is and the ambient temperature. K is also known as a constant value. So depending on where I get my K from, say I'm using it at, say, 20 degrees Celsius, would be different than if I'm using it at, say, 86 degrees Celsius. So depending on where you come up with that value, 
determines the amount that you would have. Now using the code book for an example, I can go to Table 8, Chapter 9, and Table 8, Chapter 9 is going to give me circular mill areas. Okay, it's going to show me how many circular mills a number 12 gauge wire is. It's going to show me how many circular mills a number 10 has. It's also going to give me kind of like a K value. It's going to give me a resistance value per thousand feet of wire. So let's think about a K value using a number 12 copper conductor. Okay, the ohms per thousand feet of a copper conductor, a number 12 gauge, is 1.93 ohms. So that tells me I get 1.93 ohms per thousand feet of a number 12 gauge copper conductor. So to calculate K here, I take this value, and that is at 86 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, and I'm going to multiply it times my circular mill area of that number 12 gauge wire. So if I look at a number 12 gauge copper wire, I realize that the circular mill area is 6,530 circular mills. A lot smaller than our 62,500 one. Okay, I take this times this, divide it by 1,000, and that is going to give me K. K is basically measured in ohms per circular mill foot. Okay, so if I look at that, how many ohms I will have per circular mill foot. What that means is I have a wire one foot long with one circular mill at that particular ohm or one ohms. So by taking this number 12 gauge copper conductor at the code book value of taking 1.93 times 6530 divided by 1,000, I would then come up with a K value or constant of 12.6. Now you'll often find out there a 10.4. That is based on a lower ambient temperature, which would then bring these values down. So let's apply this value. Let's look at this whole circuit and say I have a wire, okay, and I have a conductor, and we'll keep that 12.6 because we already calculated it. And I have a conductor, and that conductor is 100 feet long. So I have a 100 foot long conductor. It's a number 12 gauge copper, okay, so we know our circular mill area. So the circular mills of this number 12 is 6,530 circular mills. I have a K that I already calculated, so I know my K value is 12.6. And that's mil ohms per circular mil foot. And I have a length. So if I look at that, length is 100 feet of wire. How much resistance does this wire have? Well, by using this formula, I am able to calculate out how much resistance this wire does have. So plugging in those numbers, I take 12.6 times my length of 100 feet. I divide it by my 6,530 circular mills, and I'm able to calculate out my resistance of that conductor. And the resistance of that conductor is 0.316 ohms.